You know, going into this review, I was expecting I would be a lot nicer to this game than it looks like I'm going to be. I played this game a long time ago when it was new and didn't think it was too bad. It wasn't as good as the first, but it wasn't bad. But playing through it again for the sake of this review, I've realized something. Sonic Advance 2 is garbage! Yes, my good friend and Anime Ditto co-host Ricky warned me about this game, but I didn't listen. It really just isn't very good. But anyway, Sonic Advance 2 was Sega's follow-up to the first portable outing released in 2003 in the US for the Game Boy Advance. It was met with high praise from critics, and as I found doing my research, it's a pretty split game when it comes to fans. The story is once again straightforward. Dr. Eggman is kidnapping woodland creatures and turning them into robots. He's also kidnapped Sonic's friends, which Sonic vows to rescue. He's also looking for the Chaos Emeralds and blah 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 blah, the story's the same as the first game. The game follows the same basic format as the first, but with some pretty significant changes. You still play as four different characters, five once you beat the game, and you still progress through a linear level progression, but this time you only start as Sonic. You have to save the other characters as you progress through the story. Once you save them, you can now play as them and progress through their stories. Sonic plays exactly the same as he did in the first game. He's still the fastest, he can still do a somersault, and he can still do that weird air jump attack thingy from Sonic 3. Tails is also the same. He can fly, he can swim, he can spin his tails, nothing has changed. Knuckles, once again, can glide, climb up walls, and punch people. Though none of these abilities seem to come in as much handy in this game as they did before. The obvious change in cast from the last game to this one is Cream the Rabbit, a young rabbit character made up solely for this game who is on a quest to save her mother, Vanilla. With the help of her pet Chow Cheese, Cream joins Sonic and friends and sets out to save her mom. Cream doesn't need to exist, but because they decided to make her up for this game, they decided to make her the only character good at anything. She can fly like Tails, using her long ears. The difference is, she doesn't fly as fast, but lasts twice as long. She can also attack using her Chow, Cheese. This move is insanely broken. Cheese just automatically locks onto any enemy in sight and destroys it. Cream doesn't have to do anything. Cheese does all the work. In fact, it feels like all the bosses were built around Cream's ability to use Cheese, as they're all insanely difficult unless you're using Cream. I don't see why they felt the need to make up a new character. I like Cream, I do, but she's totally unnecessary. My theory is that they knew Sonic Heroes was in development and needed another character for Amy's team, so there you go, introduce her now to get her out of the way. Speaking of Amy, if you beat the game 100% with the other four characters, you unlock Amy, who should have been available from the start, but whatever. Amy is actually enjoyable to play as in this game because she no longer has to rely on her hammer to attack enemies. She curls into a ball when she jumps now, and she can do a sort of spin dash, essentially eliminating all problems with her from the first game, but also getting rid of anything that made her truly unique. Makes no sense for her to be hidden, but whatever, at least she's there. The stages are, for the most part, your typical Sonic stage tropes. Leaf Forest is your average simple green stage with water. Hot Crater is the weird sort of plant, sort of mountain-ish stage. It's got a lot of rails for grinding, which all the characters can do now, by the way, and tubes to shoot out of. It's okay. Music Plants is the only real standout stage in the whole game. You're running around this bizarre pink amusement park-like place with lots of instruments to jump on that make cool noises when you run on them. The springs are hi-hats! It's pretty awesome. I wish more Sonic stages were like this, instead of just sticking to the template that's been set for them for so many years. It would keep things from feeling like it's getting stale. Then, there's Ice Paradise. This is when the game starts to suck hardcore. See, in the first three stages, pretty much all you have to do is run right really fast. The game has an amazing sense of speed, so you just run, 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 and that's about it. There's very little stage exploration, you just run and occasionally kill something or hit a spring. But once you get to Ice Paradise, the rules all change. You still get that great sense of speed, 
but more often than not, you'll just run right into a ditch. From this stage on, all the stages are designed to be mean and take advantage of the high speed you're used to running at. Enemies come out of nowhere, spikes pop up out of the ground, there's jumps you have to make but will end up flying over because you're going so fast. It's a mess and unfairly challenging. The fifth stage, Sky Canyon, is the best example of that. I have died so many times in this stage just because there was a hill I was going too fast down and didn't make a jump I had a split second to react to. Techno Base is a pretty cool stage. You're like in a giant computer, but it falls to all the same problems with Sky Canyon in that you fall to your death a lot. The last stage is called Egg Utopia. It's your typical Eggman base stage. It's the hardest of all the zones, and rightfully so, I suppose. Though, overall, I feel the stage design in this game is just wrong. All the stages are designed to be ran through at full speed, with almost the entire stage being comprised of downhill slopes, ramps, and springs. But at the same time, there's always a ditch or enemy just waiting to kill you unfairly. It's like they wanted to make a game that maintained an amazing sense of speed, but also had moments where you needed to slow down. You know, like classic Sonic games? But instead, they just made everything sloped. It's a mess, and one of the biggest problems with the game. The bosses are my absolute least favorite thing about this game. They're all running bosses. And running bosses suck. You have to chase Eggman constantly while avoiding his attacks, trying to hit him and hoping you can grab some rings. Yeah, sure, they give you rings from time to time, which is more than can be said about some running bosses. <laughs> Sonic 4! <laughs> but they're so frustrating. Sonic Advance got the bosses so right. They felt classic. They felt like old school Sonic bosses. But this game just tossed that out the window in favor of speed. Sonic fans want more speed in their games, so let's make all the bosses running bosses. Yeah, it'll be great, except it isn't. They're way too hard and just take you out of the whole experience. The only character who actually seems to stand a chance at these bosses is Cream, and that's because Cheese will attack them from all the way on the other side of the screen. It's absurd! And what's even worse, in the final zone, the XX zone, get it, you fight all of the bosses AGAIN! Because that's what I was hoping for! Fighting the same bosses I already decided I hated more than anything else in a Sonic game ever! Thank you, Sonic Advance 2. Thank you. The very last boss is another Super Sonic in Space boss. It's hard, it's boring, I don't like it or even understand it. Am I hurting him or what? I don't really know what's going on. The special stages are, surprisingly, not terrible. However, getting to them is. Instead of just collecting 50 rings or finding a hidden spring or whatever, you instead have to find 7 hidden special rings throughout the stage, and then when you beat the stage, you go to the special stage. Stage. See, this is annoying because all the game wants you to do is run right, but in order to find these rings, you actually have to look for them. It seems weird that in a game that has such a high sense of speed, even compared to other Sonic games, they'd include the one form of special stage entry that involves exploration. Anyway, the special stage is in a semi-3D perspective and all you have to do is collect 300 rings. All while Zero from Sonic Adventure is chasing you for some reason. They're not great, but they're certainly not as bad as a lot of other Sonic games. This game also brings back the Tiny Chow Garden from Sonic Advance, but it's largely the same thing. The only difference is the Rock, Paper, Scissors minigame was replaced by a game where you play as, you guessed it, Cream. The graphics are once again great, with the stages actually looking even better this time around than they did in Sonic Advance. And the music's pretty catchy too. As my good buddy Don said, Techno Bass Act 1 theme is the best thing in Sonic Advance 2. Ultimately, Sonic Advance 2 is a cruel game with flawed game mechanics, mean stage designs, and horrible, horrible boss battles. It's one thing to make a Sonic game that's fast, but to make it so fast that everything you do results in death? That's just bad game design. If you like this game, that's fine. I don't begrudge you for it. It's your opinion, and there are some things to like about this game. Music Plant is fantastic, and it's still awesome to play as Tails and Knuckles, but 
to me, it's just a bad entry in an otherwise great string of Game Boy Advance games. So, take that for whatever it's worth. And, um, just, just one more thing. This isn't about Sonic Advance 2, but actually about my upcoming reviews. Um, if you didn't already hear in some of the other reviews, or maybe in some of our Let's Plays or whatever, earlier this year, my GameCube memory card corrupted, and I had to purchase a new one. And the games coming up are games I'm going to have to play through again, because in order to get the footage that I need. So, you know, Sonic Heroes, Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic Riders, I have to play through all of those again, and there some of those I don't even want to play through again. But in order to review them, I, I have to do it, and they're on my list, so... Uh, yeah, uh, there's even a few games that I haven't played through, and I'm playing through for the first time that I plan to review. So... Please be patient. I've been trying to get a review out every week or every other week, but uh, it's going to take me a little while for these upcoming ones because I have to, you know, play through them all again. And these are the longer games. They're not like, I can't beat them in an hour like I can beat Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So uh, there's that. Please just bear with me while I do this. And um, I've gotten quite a few questions asking, you know, if I was going to review Sonic Generations or whatever. Um... I do plan to review Sonic Generations and maybe even do a live stream let's play of it when I get it. The problem is I've been out of a job since July so I don't really have the money right now to purchase it. I am looking for a job and trust me when I get one I do plan to buy Sonic Generations. I do plan to let everybody know how I feel about it but as of right now it's, it's not something that's on the table. Uh, so it will happen eventually just probably not when the game's still relevant. So yeah, that's that's it. Just uh, look out for my next review, and uh, I'll talk to you all later.